Hi guys, it's Ina and today I'm going to tell you 10 things you have to do before moving to China. Let's go! Thing number one. Verify your degree before coming to China. Why do you need it? If you want to find a job, it is must-have. If you go as a tourist and later you would like to change your visa to a student visa, you have to verify your degree and you have to show it. So better to do it at home. How to do it? So first of all, you need to take uh, the original paper and go to the competent federal office in your home country and they should put kind of a stamp or maybe apostille or something similar. After that, you need to do notarized, notarized translation and hand it into any Chinese embassy. Process is uh, quite fast, it would take maybe only one or two weeks and it's quite cheap. Thing number two, get a VPN. As you may have heard, Chinese government blocks some of the foreign resources such as Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and of course Google. If you're a lucky owner of any Apple products, so you should not really worry because you can get any VPNs in Apple Store, official one. Even Chinese Apple Store has some VPNs, so it's fine. However, if you're an owner of Android phone, you have to be prepared even before leaving your home country. Because here you would not get any access to Google Play, so you would not be able to download a VPN and you can, we can say that you can forget about using Facebook, YouTube, Instagram and Google. That's it. Get a VPN. Hello. So thing number three, prepare some cash before coming to China, even before thinking coming to China. Most of the places in China, they would reject any Western credit cards and it would be very difficult to exchange any currency in the bank. Most of the people who work in the bank, they're either lazy or unprofessional. And even if they know what to do, it would take them at least one or two hours. So it's just wasting of time. Same stories with ATMs. Most of them, they would reject your card and you might fight a lot until you'll find the ATM that would not reject your card. So how much money should you take? Let's say, of course, it depends from person to person, from city where you're going, how long you're going to stay here. But the average salary of a monthly salary of a foreigner in China, not in the first year cities like Beijing, Shanghai, Shenzhen, is about 7,000 yuan and it is $1,000. So, thing number four, prepare some condoms. Ooh. Yes, condoms. So Asians are known as a petite race and according to the expats, local rubber items are quite small, tight and have a tendency to tear more often. Honestly, I've never seen extra large or XXL packages here. However, you can always buy them on Taobao. But unfortunately, all of them would be imported and you'll have to wait for at least two or three weeks until they'll reach you. So, thing number five. You have to download WeChat and QQ before coming to China. So these apps are not only popular messengers here. You can also use them to pay for the variety of goods and services. So you can pay in the taxi, you can pay in the restaurant, you can pay at McDonald's, you can even receive some payment for your extra classes. So it's really convenient. Get one of those and be in touch. Thing number six, get a good offline dictionary. So my favorite is Pleco and it comes in English and the standard package is for free. So later, if you'd like, you can buy any ads on like OCR, uh, optical character recognition or HSK tests for those who are willing to learn Chinese. So I would really recommend you to buy OCR option because it would make your life much easier, especially in the restaurants where most of the menus are without any pictures and without any prompts of what are you going to eat. So get a good dictionary. Thing number seven, maps. If you have an iPhone, you're lucky because you'll have a perfect map. They're Apple Maps. They work great and they're in English or any other language. And it's very easy to see how it works and it will show all of the routes of the buses and subways. It's great. However, it would be a little bit difficult to take a cab because on those maps there are no Chinese names and streets are written in English. 
or kind of in translated into English. So your taxi drivers would not understand you because locals usually they don't speak English and they cannot read English. So for those purposes, you'd better to download the application Do by Do Maps. So same type of map, but in English, uh, in Chinese, and it's quite easy to use. You just place a star where you are and copy paste the address where you need to go. And after you just zoom and show it to taxi driver and he'll know where to take you. And you don't even have to speak. You just stop the taxi. car, show a phone, point, and that's it. Thing number eight, tampons, <gasps> Bring some tampons, if you're a girl, of course. So for some reasons in China, it's very difficult to find tampons and maybe Chinese, they don't buy, they don't use them. I don't know why. So if you're really in need of them, you should go to Careful Metro or Walmart. Only those places you might find some and they would be quite expensive. And what to do? There are no other places. Of course, Taobao. You can find them on Taobao. Thing number nine is dedicated to all blondies who are willing to relocate to China. As I was blonde when I first came, time came to China, I know it on my own skin. So if you go to any Chinese supermarket, it would be impossible to find any hair dyer with a tone 6 lighter. Any professional shops with professional products will not, also, will not satisfy your needs and most of the things they sell, there are Chinese brands with very specific colors like yellowish or orange, so maybe you don't want those. If you really want to get perfect blonde, you can go to really good hairdressers uh, in a good hairdresser salon, but it would cost you a fortune. Thing number 10. If you are a big man or woman, or you have big feet, or some of your features are really huge, big, so please prepare your own clothes and shoes. Don't rely on local markets, because most of the Chinese are very petite and small and even short, so it would be almost impossible to find any clothes of your size. And even if we go to foreign shops, maybe they will not have as much option for bigger sizes. So, so these were 10 tips for coming to China. I hope this video was useful for you. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye-bye.